What up, ladies and gentlemen? Jesse Warden here. It is about 40 degrees, maybe 39. And Albus Man and I, we are in the George Washington National Forest towards the north end this time. And we're hitting the big slosh loop. Now, I'm not German, but slosh, I might be mispronouncing it, is the German word for castle. And the reason is, is because the mountain up there, it's a really cool lookout. It looks like a castle. So the German, slosh is the German word for castle. And so if you approach it, I think from the bottom part on the left side, we're going the other way. We're going counterclockwise. But if you go clockwise, or you take the other, I think the wolf gap, wolf gap, wolf gap entrance, you can see it. And it looks like a castle. It's got gorgeous views. You actually circle around it, I believe by a bridge, go up. Alice and I are gonna spend two nights. I'm so excited. And the reason I'm excited is that usually, the day after I get kind of emo, right? I get kind of sad, I have to leave the woods. And you know, I kind of got comfortable there. I wake up feeling good and I'm like, I wanna stay here. And I've watched all these people on YouTube who get to do multiple nights. So they get to wake up in the woods, but then they get to fall asleep in the woods. Again, I'm kind of excited I get to do that. With Albus. A lot of people do this 12.5 mile loop in one sitting. Others make it a single nighter. Some people car camp next to the river. Albus and I are gonna do three miles, maybe six miles, and then you know three or four miles the second day. So we're gonna take it slow, low mileage. There is so much I learned the past two hikes. I just can't wait to tell you. I'm gonna have to space it out on this trip. I don't want to inundate you with knowledge. Hey, look, campsite. That's kind of cool. Like we just started. That's the second campsite I've seen. That's so neat. So there's a stream that you follow the entire way. And so a lot of campsites. This is actually kind of a cool carpet, car camping place because you can glamp, glamorous camping. You can park your car, carry heavy gear, and you don't have to go that far. If you want to, you can actually go a mile. There's a bunch of campsites I heard. And the temperature is gonna get to, I think, max of 40 tomorrow, and 26 tonight. That's not counting wind, which might get up to anywhere from six to 15, which is a wind chill, especially on top of the mountain. We're in the valley tonight. And then tomorrow, I think it's like 37, maybe 42. And then 22 at night, not counting the wind chill. And see, a question I had was at what level, what is the lowest temperature that he can survive at? Because I know with crappy gear, I can survive pretty low. But what about him? Turns out small dogs, mid-sized dogs, start to really get really cold and dangerous at 20 degrees Fahrenheit. And what that means is that they need a jacket or especially something to break the wind. The ground, they're not as affected, but it's still good to give them a ground pad so they don't lose heat, if, you know, because they have fur that keeps heat in, so they're not as susceptible as we are. But that's not true of Shelties. Shelties can go to negative 60 Fahrenheit. What that means, that means below negative 40 Celsius. So what that means is that at around negative 53, they start, it starts to get dangerous. You should probably get them a jacket, but they have two layers of fur. They have the outer fur, and then he has a really thick one inside, which you can't really see, unless you pull his fur back, I'll show you later. And what it allows is he can go to negative 53 and he's fine. This weather, he'll be snoring, just like he always does. That's the first thing I learned is that Shelties are just like Huskies, you know, other really Northern dogs. A Shetland Sheepdog is what a Shel a Sheltie is slang for. So he can totally handle that, which I didn't know. So these are the double orange blazes, I think. Alves, man, he's always so happy at the beginning before he gets exhausted. Super happy. Now, I'm about three miles away 
from, I believe it's the Sugar Knob Cabin? Cabin? Sugar Knob Cabin? Now they call it knob because there's a series of knobs that go kind of like the troughs in a wave inside this mountain up there. And it's run by the Appalachian Trail Club and you can book it in the weekdays for $30, I think, and it's $40 on the weekend. And it's, it fits four. It's very primitive, but you know, if it's freezing in the winter, it's got bunk beds, I mean, it's great, right? Whereas me, I want to sleep outside, but I thought it'd be cool to take Her Majesty, who's not much of a hamburger. She, she's okay with tents, but that'd be kind of cool, right? Super romantic. It's only about a three mile, slightly uphill hike. It's not the great isn't that much. I see the crystal you watching me? Is that what's going to Figure out how you're gonna get down there. Hoping it's 4:15 now. I'm hoping Alice and I can make it just as it's setting, so I'll have enough light to pick some good trees. But it's so hard to go faster. It's so heavy. The pack is so heavy. You know, I bring a lot of cookware. At least I don't like eating unhealthy on the trail. Just because it's a you know every other weekend kind of thing doesn't mean that I can compromise my diet, eat a lot of sodium-filled food that's processed. You know what I mean? Trying to make good choices, which requires extra weight. We're 2.4 miles in of 3.3 miles, and there's a lot of campsites around the Sugar Knob shelter. But Alba's man's foot, his back foot is hurting again, and he keeps stopping. So we might change this from a two night, 12.2 mile to a one night, six mile. But I'm putting his wax stuff, I should have put on at the car, I didn't think about it, but his paw stuff. I'm gonna let this warm up, put it on his paw, see if it helps, and then tomorrow we'll just head home. So, I mean, he's, he's middle aged, but I, he's just, you know, he got thyroid problems, health problems, it's not his fault. And I don't wanna, I don't wanna hurt him. I don't want him to do something he don't wanna do. I know he likes being here, he loves the weather, but it, it hurts. Got to be responsible and not hurt the man. The thing about the headlamp is it has this thing that says pull before use. So I was wondering why it was taking so long to charge in the car. Because it wasn't charging. Good thing about batteries. Jeez. So cold, the little battery strap broke right off. But good news is in here, I have a lighter with some duct tape on it so I can at least wrap it closed a little bit. Good as new, even though it is technically brand new because I lost my other one. Guess I'll be exchanging that tomorrow. So I took the woodpecker, who was yelling and flying around as a omen, and my headlamp, not charging because it had a piece of plastic in it with the rechargeable battery blocking it. I have three spare batteries, put those in, 
and the headlamp works, so that's good. The batteries weren't that cold. Come on, Alice. Alice and I are gonna head back to the campsite I passed about a mile ago. So I have to improv. It's good news for him, it's mostly downhill. It's only a mile, we'll go to camp, and then tomorrow, be like a mile and a half out. We can go home, quit this trip early. I love him, but he just, he isn't meant for these, these long hikes, and that's okay. It's good to learn. It's good in, in this situation, things could have been so horribly worse. Couldn't they have Albus? He's just like, what are you doing, man? They could have been so much worse. Come on, buddy. He's a bit confused while we're abandoning the ship. I love his attitude. He, he wants to go. He's like, why are we going back? Uh, but guess what? There's always next time. But it's okay. I got good food. And I got some good winter gear to test. So that's good. And hopefully Cabela's will be cool about the headlamp. That was really disappointing. That it just broke like that. So I got that duct tape on the lighter trick from Really Big Monkey 1. David Pern. He's a bushcrafter out of Georgia. And he's taught me a lot about fire starting and creating various types of shelters. But some of his just little tricks that he talks about and he speaks from experience and he shows the failures. I just, I love how that guy teaches. And he was right. You have multiple lighters, I've had lighters fail. So I carry multiple because of him. He said, keep duct tape on your lighter. Seems kind of silly. Cause you know, duct tape can be heavy. So you have enough to make repairs for your tarps. I didn't ever think I would be repairing a headlamp. And yet here I am. It's keeping the batteries in. So props to you, really big monkey one. Props to you, David Pern. He saved my, my bacon, that's for sure. I don't want to hold my hand, hold that the entire time. Or use paracord, which I also care because of you. So I could have used, used paracord too. But that's why I care a lot of that. Not just for bear bags, but because you, you, know, you carry that stuff. So. It's all right, we're having fun. Even with disaster, we're having fun. I have a feeling this guy is hibernation. Dude, how are you even out here? <laughs> He's jumping at like Mach 2 and his feet hurt. I think he's supposed to be in the river down there asleep. What are you doing, man? Hey, the average man. What's he doing, dude? Oh, the smoker, the smoker. So the nice thing about being an extrovert who's alone with a dog is that I don't have to share my mead with him. <laughs> so if, if Ian was here, he might partake one. He's not a mead fan, but I definitely would share with him. And he's not. He's gonna celebrate. <laughs> 
seeing Big Slash. But given the fact that we have an injured pup, it's not going to happen, so I'm celebrating early. <sighs> Cheers. Steak is done. Onions aren't quite caramelized, but who cares? Lots of butter. Now the potatoes, I like to crack the, the lid just a bit. That way, when it has a little extra water, it can evaporate out. And so they get mashed, but not too much water. I know some people like them soupy, I don't. But you wanna keep some in there because they get burned if you don't have water to boil with, especially on the coals where it's not always perfect temperature adjustment. Albus gets some of his kibble stuff, and he heard his name. I'm gonna give him a lot because he worked hard today. And then on top of that, we'll put some steak with no onions. Ugh. Not as much seasoning since that's not good for fat men. Just a minute, buddy. hot so don't want you to hurt you with the mouthies the mouthies of the albus man they could hurt just like his foot injured mouth injured foot that would be bad bad.com bad.org bad.net and edu and one little piece. Stir it around, bah. Okay. Yeah, they're a little watery, but that's okay. That's okay. Ah, oh, a Labrador retriever. He is not. <laughs> What's the other one? The Australian sheepdog. Those dogs are smart. Abbas, ma'am? Not so much. Mmm. Onions and butter. And super fat. It's amazing, huh? He's like... He ate all the steak. That's why he's looking at me. That's it? Did you even taste that, dude? Hmm. Good morning. Who the tot? Gave Albus food, but it's more. It was the water we have left. I used half of it for the fire last night. That's another thing I learned is that I should bring one of these thermoses just for the fire. Because I can go down to that stream down there, get water, put out the fire. And I don't need to filter it. <laughs> I woke up at 4 a.m. Wolves howling. When I was in Shenandoah on my favorite hilltop, I had been awoken by the coyotes. But being awoken by the wolf, wolves howling was very different. <laughs> but it's Tuesday. It's about... 29 degrees. But it's supposed to be a beautiful day. The hope was I would get to the top of, was it Mill Mountain? Whatever it's called. You'd be able to see a beautiful 360 view once you got to the top because most of the trees cover the mountain. So during the spring and summer, it's very difficult to actually see the views because the trees have leaves and they're not all you know, pine. So in the winter, they lose their foliage so you can actually see. And since no clouds in the sky today, that's okay. Your beautiful day back to the car, beautiful day driving back to Richmond. That's okay. It's cool to watch the sunrise. You can see the Son, kind of walk down the the trees as it rises. It's pretty cool.
if you first don't succeed, try again. Like the big slosh loop. <laughs> this is clearly a failure, but we still had fun. So I'll try again next time. Hey, my name is Jesse Warden. I'm aborting early the big slosh loop because of my dog's injury. And I will see y'all in the next video. Nah. Oh.